Hey folks, Coolie Dean here, and welcome to the second part of our tile map movement tutorial for Unity 3D. Uh, in the last episode, we talked about just the general theory, and now we're going to go ahead and dive in and actually create our project. So I'm going to go ahead and create my project here. Note that I'm using Unity 4.6.1. If you have a different version and you've run into any problems, you may just want to update to make sure that we've got the same matching one. I'll leave the defaults for 3D, although it really doesn't matter for doing things in 3D or 2D. I'm also using the professional version, the pro version of Unity, but everything we're going to be doing in here is going to be fine in the free edition. So let's go ahead and just create this uh, empty project. All right. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to create an empty object in here, which will then be used to contain all of our map information. And we're actually just going to go ahead and create it an empty and we'll call it map. I think that's probably perfectly fine. So this is going to exist in the world. We're going to make sure that everything is centered um, and, and that's going to be there. I'm right away. I'm going to go ahead and save this project or the scene rather as just something like scene. I like, I like to name it really obviously like that so I can keep track. That way, whenever I hit control S now, it'll just save any of our changes. So we need two scripts to get started. Uh, the first one is actually gonna be a simple data structure. And the second one is going to be the actual map data that's going to be attached to the map object. Maybe I'll start with the, uh, the tile map object that it gets added here. So this is gonna be a script. It's gonna be called, we'll call it tile map. I think that's probably okay. And then we're going to go ahead and open this up. So this is a component attached to our map. We're going to need two things here. We're going to need, well, we're going to need one thing to start off with. This tile map object needs to know what all the tiles in our game are, what they're comprised of. Basically, we need to be able to say, hey, I'm at coordinates 5, 4. What tile type is underneath me? So right away, that should scream out to you that we need some sort of array. Um, the question is, what kind of data is this, going, is this array going to be made out of? Are we going to have some sort of, I don't know, some sort of tile class? And so we're going to have, not tile map, thank you, autocomplete. Are we going to have some sort of tile map like this, which is like all my tiles? Maybe we could do something like that. Um, I think that in most games, you're not going to need... Um, you're not going to need each actual physical tile in the world to be represented by some sort of tile object because most likely your tiles are relatively static. So what we really need is we need some sort of array, some sort of thing like a tile data or tile type array, maybe like this. And then our tiles information here really just needs to point to an, in, in, an instance of this. So for example, if tile type zero is grass and one is a hill and two is a mountain, for example, then all we need is a two-dimensional array of integers. Now, note, we don't actually have to do a two-dimensional array. We could do a one-dimensional array and then keep track of our height and width offsets and yada, 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 yada. Um, but I think for convenience, it's going to be quite sexy if we just, um, if we represent things this way, I think we're going to be pretty happy with that. So that's what we're going to do. And that way we can do something in our start. We can instantiate it. We could do something like a, into a map size X equals, I don't know, maybe a 10 by 10 map. Size Y equals 10. So then tiles equals new uh, int like that. And I think we can then put in the map size X map size y the, the biggest problem with switching between programming languages all the time like i do is the uh is the array syntax is like the one thing that that seems to be insanely different between each uh, programming language that i have um, but i think this will properly instantiate that and then later on what we can do is say ah, tiles um well zero that zero your tile type of zero like so and we can do that throughout our entire thing in fact we'll want to initialize our map split hell Go ahead and do that. Whoa, what did I just accidentally click? Let's do a quick uh, for int x equals zero, x is less than map size x, x plus plus, and then we'll repeat the very same thing inside here, but with a y. Now, we don't, there's gonna be a little bit of overkill here because I'm gonna say tiles at x, y, is equal to zero. Now by default, an array of integers should all be initialized to zero, but we're gonna make this line explicit right now because we're gonna change this around later on. So what we're gonna do is we're going to um, allocate our uh, map tiles 
and then initialize our map tiles. So this is great and all, and we're setting everything to zero, but what is, what is this tiles type? I'm, I'm implying that there's going to be some sort of tile type um, class, but we haven't actually created it yet. That doesn't exist. And we're mapping these tiles to something over here. So let's go ahead and create that right now. We're going to pop back in Unity. We'll probably get an error. Yeah, because tile type does not exist. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new C sharp script, and I'm going to call it tile type. Of course, make sure that your capitalization and spelling is exact. It's very important for this. I'm going to open that up. And always, this is another thing that people bring up a lot, always make sure that the class name matches the file name. It's very important. They have to match exactly, including capitalization. Otherwise, you will get errors. Now, tile type is not actually going to be a mono behavior. It's not going to be a component that we attach to a game object in Unity. We can get rid of that. It's just going to be a raw, basic C Sharp class. Um, it's definitely not going to have a start or update. It'll probably have, it may have a constructor later on. We'll see how it goes. But right now, it really just has to contain data. It needs, um, I don't know, uh, maybe a public string called name. You know, grassland versus mountain versus whatever. Um, also, we're going to use, um, we're going to take a very simple way to represent our data in the game. Again, if you've watched the original tile map tutorial, you know that what we could do is we could create a mesh and then make a texture. Um, in Civilization V, for example, what they do is they actually dynamically create a texture on the go. Um, and they do like nice blending between the different hexes and so on and so forth. We're not going to do anything like that. What I'm going to do to represent my tiles in the game world, each tile in the game world is simply going to be a cube. Like literally, I'm going to create a cube like this and each tile is going to have a cube in the game world. This can be a little bit slow because especially if you have a very, very large map, you could have a lot of game objects in the world and having a lot of game objects can slow down Unity. Now there's a few ways around it. What you could do is set up some sort of system uh, by which any cube that is outside of the camera area, you just delete. And then when the camera moves, you can create the cubes um, at that time. And, and depending on how you implement things, creating the cubes and destroying the cubes over and over and over, maybe fast, maybe slow. For our purposes, we're going to create them all right from the start, and it's going to be fine, because we're going to have a small map, and this is just a demonstration. But that is how it's going to work in our game world. So, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create some prefabs for the various terrain types. So going back to my code over here, I'm gonna have a public game object and we're gonna call it something like tile visual prefab. This is the visual for this tile and we're gonna keep track of that. And for now, that's going to be fine. We could probably, later on, we'll probably have some, maybe a Boolean like uh, is walkable, right? We can default this to true. But then maybe for our mountain, we can say that, no, no, it's not walkable. Alternatively, what we can do is put in the movement cost um, for things like hills and march marshes or whatever. Some difficult terrain can have a higher movement cost. We're going to leave this off for now. We'll talk about this later on when we need it. For now, we'll just, we'll just put that in like that. Uh, and if I pop back over into Unity, um, so we have that tile type. And our tile map class already has a reference to tile types. What I'm going to do... This is going to be kind of a neat trick because we want to populate this tile types, right? I'm going to make this public, which means it should show up in the inspector, right? If I go to my map, tile types should show up in the inspector, but it doesn't. Let, let's compare and contrast here. If I went and did something like public string array, strings like this, and pop back into Unity, that'll show up in the inspector. So why doesn't the second one do that? Well, it's because by default, these custom classes like this are not serializable. So uh, Unity doesn't know that it can sort of read and write and generate these things. So we're going to point out that, listen, it's totally okay. This is a serializable class. Unity, you can automatically load and save and do whatever you want in the background with this nonsense, and we're going to be okay. Now, our tile types do show up over here. And what I can do is expand this. I can say we've got, I don't know, three different tile types. Pop this all open. And say the first one is going to be grassland. The second one is going to be, um, let's say, marsh or swamp. Swamp. This is going to represent later on our difficult terrain. And then finally, we're going to have our mountain. Now, we need to tell it what the, uh, the visual prefab is that we're going to generate in the world. And it's going to be these cubes. So we're basically going to have uh, three of them. Um, one, two, three. Um, and we're going to... What do I want? How do I want to deal with the lighting? I guess I could just put the, uh, see what, I'm going to go and do a couple of things here. 
I'm on my camera, I'm going to change the, the projection to orthographic, though. I think everyone, everything will be nice and square and flat and fine. Uh, we're going to make sure the camera is completely centered because it'll feel pretty good about that. Do I not send the, um, the ambient light here? No, I guess I do it in Edit, Render Settings. There you go, Ambient Light. I'm just going to go and make the ambient light um, perfectly white. There we go. So that way we don't have to add any lights in our scene. Everything is just completely and fully lit right from the start. So what I'm going to do, I've got these three cubes, and they're going to represent the... Um, this is going to be tile grass, tile um, swamp, and tile mountain, like that. And I'm going to create three materials. And they're just going to be the color coding. Matte grass... Control D to double them up, matte mountain, and matte swamp, and our grass is going to be green, something like that, that's kind of nice. Our mountain is going to be, I don't know, gray, and our swamp is going to be some sort of brown, uh, more brown, something like that. Not very attractive at all, and then we're just going to assign the material to our objects, tile swamp, tile mountain, grass and then if I take these bad boys and let's flip over to the 2d viewpoint it'll be a little easier to work with there we go so we've got our mountain swamp and grass tiles these are gonna be prefabs so I'm just gonna go ahead and drag them each into my project and then delete them from my world and so on my map here in my tile types I can drag these prefabs here and here and here so that way when my map is actually being generated which happens here after i sort of decide what all the tiles should be i'll run another function that will instantiate a copy of all these prefabs in the right place for the tile and then we'll be able to see our stuff it's a very very low-tech way of doing things but it will work perfectly well for our particular example over here um, so this is our basic structure. We're going to do that. What else do I want? We've got grasses. Um, let me go and put in, so we've got a, a 10 by 10 map. Let's say, what do I want to do? Let's make our map slightly more interesting. So uh, to be grass, let's put in, I don't know. I, I want a little bit of something to look at. So it's not just a one big green blob here. What if, um, let's, wow make a u-shaped mountain range this will be useful for our pathfinding later on um, so i'm going to do something like tiles uh doesn't really matter what i pick uh four on the x and four on the y we're going to set it to our mountain which we know our mountain is two now this is I'm sort of doing blind, right? So it's the grassland is zero, swamp is one, mountain is two. If the order is different, then these numbers will be different. Hard coding in like this is not a good idea, but it'll work fine for our particular example. So what I'm going to do is just copy this out. So my U-shaped mountain will do something like um, five, six, seven, eight. And then on the eight, we're going to go five... You'll see how this looks in just a second, and then six, and then same thing on the four column. So this should make a little U-shaped mountain. Now we can't see it right now because we're because we're not actually generating any ver uh, um, visuals, right? If I hit play, nothing will happen on screen. Did we get any errors? Nope, no errors. That's a really good sign. If you did get any errors, do make sure, of course, that you've got your semicolons at the end of every line. Make sure that your brackets, you properly open and close everything. Same thing with your parentheses, so on and so forth. So this is where we're generating the map, um, the actual map data. Now that we have all of our map data, let's spawn the visual prefabs. And I think we can finish this before the end of this video, and that way we'll have something pretty to look at. And then we can start actually playing the game. Um, so, here's how we're going to operate. We're going to do another... Let's make a function. Um, generate map visuals. We'll do something like that. So, this is going to be void, generate map visuals, like so. And we're going to do another loop through the entire map. Very similar to this. But... What we're going to do is we're going to instantiate, 
we need a prefab. Well, we know what prefabs. We've got our tile, our tile type. Which tile type are we going to be instantiating? Tell you what, I'll make, I'll make it a little bit more explicit here. I'll, I'll put in some temp variables. We've got a tile type, um, TT, and we're going to grab it from the list of tile types where, for our tile coordinates. So at tile XY, this is going to be a number. The number is an index to our tile type array. So we're going to do that. This is the tile type at this X and Y. So we're going to instantiate TT.TileVisualPrefab. And where are we going to, in, to instantiate it? Well, I suppose that our X um, needs a vector 3. New vector 3. So where X and Y coordinates are X and Y. And the Z can be 0. That's going to be fine. And we don't want any rot rotation, so we'll just give it the identity quaternion. That means it won't be rotated in any way whatsoever. And that should be good. If we want to, we could grab a copy of it. You know, game object, geo. We could grab a copy of it and do something, but I don't think we're going to need to do that. We're just going to go ahead and instantiate it in, uh, in the correct position. It should be the right position. Um, it's possible that the scales will cause some overlap. But anyway, let's see what happens. Let's just hit play and what could possibly go wrong. All right. That is um, surprisingly good. It's almost like everything worked exactly right. I, I'm, I'm not sure if I was actually expecting that, but there we have it. Um, you can see our U-shaped mountain range over here. That worked out perfectly well. So the idea will be later on, we're going to stick our character inside of this, and then we're going to give him a destination of over here, and we're going to see him path around, for example. Um, and we can make this even better with a little bit of maybe swampy, difficult terrain um, in an area, because theoretically that will be, have a higher movement cost. And so not only do we want him to avoid mountains, but we're going to want him to take the fastest possible route, which may or may not involve going through the swampy bits. But that'll have to wait until another video. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time, folks. Bye-bye.